as I look back over my life, yes, my thinking has gone through some quite radical changes. I simply accepted what my teachers and preachers and theological teachers told me. I, I probably accepted far too much. But after all, they were the authorities and I was simply a novice, you know, trying to prepare myself for the, for the ministry. And then when I later became a teacher, that I came under the influence of some great scholars who made me question things I've tended to just accept on authority on the past. So for growth to maturity, it seems to me, one should always be going beyond the present boundaries to, to see what there is beyond that. I've never thought of God as a personal God. Indeed, in a sense, the, the word God is really beyond all definition, simply because it is a symbolic term. God has been conceived in a popular sense as a being in the sky. After all, it's reflected in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, you see. In the tradition, of course, it was always thought quite improper ever to attempt to paint a picture of God or express God in, in statuary or that sort of thing. But that became broken at the Renaissance. I often wonder how Michelangelo got away with it when on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel he painted God in the act of creation, the sort of superhuman person. But theologians before that had avoided speaking of God in those terms. And indeed, uh, the great Thomas Aquinas says God has no body. In other words, God is a nobody. Now, if God has no body, God is not a being. God is, God is not a thing. God, God is beyond all that. And, of course, that uh, brings us to the point where today we can accept that the term God is simply a symbolic term for all that is greatest and highest in our values. To answer the question, is there or is there not a God, one has to ask, what are we really talking about? Uh, we have, the word God has become a bit like X in algebra, the unknown. Now, when you ask, is there an X or is there not an X, it's a nonsensical question. So, in a sense, to ask whether God exists or does not exist is a nonsensical question until you define the word God. But if the word God is indefinable, then you cannot, cannot ask the question. Now, what people really mean when they ask this question is, is it conceivable that this universe has been created by a rational mind rather like ours, does it show evidence that it has a clear purpose in, in being there at all? I would say no purpose for which we can actually give any rational answer. What has struck me through life more and more is that most things happen by chance. The kind of 
people each of us becomes is largely the result of a whole lot of chances from the very time we were conceived. So what religion is for me is how does one best respond to the various chance events which happen to you in life? How do you make the best of them? And, and uh, that is what I have found the, the whole Christian myth helpful in helping to give me give it shape and, and, and supply the kind of values that, that one needs in order to live a meaningful life. It was when I wrote Tomorrow's God that I started off with the issue, did God make us? or did we make God? The evolution of human culture, a culture which distinguishes us from the culture of all other animals, is human language. So that, in a sense, we humans are the product of human language. Without language, we cannot be human. And through language, we have created the world in which we live. It is a world of language and of understanding. So in this sense, I came to realize that the, uh, the, the phrase in the St. John's Gospel, in the beginning was the word, had a very interesting new application or meaning. There were certain terms which came became more and more basic, one of which, of course, was the word God, which, of course, again, has its own particular history in that uh, it started off as, as a generic term referring to a class of spiritual beings with which the ancient human mind tried to interpret the forces of nature, such as the wind and the spring, and then it went through a radical transformation and the gods were dismissed, abandoned, seen to be having no reality and replaced by one unit, the one God. And that characterized Judaism, Christianity and Islam for the next two and a half thousand years or more. And whereas we used to think of God as the creator, I think it's better to think of God as simply the process of creativity, which is in us and it is in, in, in the universe in an awe-inspiring way. The creation of the universe was attributed to God, but our ideas or our understanding of reality has changed out of all recognition, so much so that the idea that there was nothing once except God and God created the universe is really a, a, a bit puerile now.